Well, thank you, Chris, and welcome to the Brand Room on the Goshen County Fairgrounds. Myself and my grandfather, Ron Kaufman, are here all week at the fair. We'll be interviewing our local 4-H and FFA participants at the fair this week in Torrington. And uh, I don't want to age him on the air, but I'll just say that my grandpa, Ron Kaufman, has years of experience in this field at 4-H and FFA under his belt. So I'm going to let him ask our local 4-H and FFA participants about their projects this week at the fair. Thank you, Ryan. And we do. We have had a lot of nice interviews and a lot of knowledgeable individuals in the 4-H and FFA program. With us today, we have a few uh, kids with a variety of projects, and I think we'll start with this young lady. Give us your name and what club you're in. My name is Maria Barkman, and I'm in Bent Barrels Cricket Arrows 4-H club. So let's, uh, we haven't really talked to any shooting sports people. Uh, so uh, how'd you do at state? I assume you went to state in what month and in Douglas, correct? Yes, it was in July, um, and I think I did well, and our, our whole county did well too, I think, so. So what do you, uh, do you shoot? Do you do the bow, the arrows or uh, I do, um, the rec- gun? I did, yeah, <laughs> I did recurve and um, air pistol and air rifle this year. Okay, uh, recurve, tell us about that. It was interesting. I placed ninth, and that was last place, but I did have fun. <laughs> That's the main thing. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. Well, did you have trouble hitting a target? I, yeah, I hadn't practiced all that much, and I hadn't practiced in, I've been like 15 yards is what I was shooting at mostly, and most of this stuff was at least 30 yards, so oh. it was a little different. <laughs> it threw you off a little. Yeah. I would assume it varies, or do you shoot at one distance? It varies. Well, the, well, for blue face, which is like the target, it's 30 yards, I think. And um, the like 3D animals, they vary. So some were probably the closest was 10 or 15 yards. And then there was some that I don't even know how far away they were, but they were far. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, Ryan should know. He uh, kind of likes to do those type of things. So I should make him ask questions. <laughs> yeah. uh, air rifle. Air rifle. I think I placed ninth and I did the light target sporter. Tell me what that is. So this is a pe- it's a pellet gun, and um, it's an I guess it's a new group they made because I don't know what was going on. I don't know the details, but I don't I'm not sure how many kids were in there, but I think it was close to 50. So I think mm. I I placed well. Yes, so you did. Yeah, you I enjoyed ninth. it. Yeah, that was my first year doing rifle up at state. So yeah, so that's excellent. Yeah. Good job. Um, Tell us a little bit about sporting, uh, shooting sports. Do you practice every week or ever? Do you have meetings? Uh, what's the situation? Yeah. Every Tuesday night at about six, we practice our um, the pellet guns and the archery over by the four H in the four H building, and the one beside it is archery. And then on Thursdays, once the weather is permitting, we go out to the range and do the twenty two stuff. The gun range. Yeah, and then every. I think fourth Tuesday we have a meeting in the 4-H building at 7. Okay. So how would you do with the tw- 22? I did not shoot 22 this year. Didn't you? No. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so that's interesting, and uh, there's a lot of activities in shooting sports, and uh, they the leaders are very safe, and they make their uh, members very safe, don't they? You yes. have to go through a certain program. You have certain rules. You have to go through hunter safety to be a part of the 4-H club. And, yeah, you do have rules. And you'll learn that, especially if you're new. Um, they'll have a ori- orientation for the new members and go over what the c- um, line commands are. And if you have any questions, you can ask them then. And, of course, they're there every week. So you're always learning, and they're helping you out. And if you have questions, you can ask them then, too. Okay, good, excellent. So give us a little uh, background on some of your other projects. Um, I'm doing seven um projects which would be woodworking i did a table like a coffee table and i did some jam and a leather um, craft project i mean i did a lot of things a quilt i can't even remember all my projects off the top of my head um also i'm in dogs and i did the agility this morning and placed third third group. Yep. um tell us a little bit about uh so I assume you're in a senior class. Yes. And uh, how'd you do? Uh, other, what do you have to do? I should say. In what? Agility. In agility, um, my I was in a class. It was 
a novice dog on leash. So I was, um, I, I think I did pretty well because I was actually only able to go to two practices. So my dog hadn't had a lot of practice and she actually did pretty well. She um, refused a couple of times on the one of the walks, but um, she did really well, I think. What breed? English Shepherd. English Shepherd. Yes. What is, what's her name? Roper. Roper, okay. Uh, excellent. Uh, what about, have you uh, been over to the 4-H building, see how you placed in leather work? And it doesn't open till 3 today. So. so you won't know. Yeah. Yeah. So I bet you'll be there f quarter till 3. Oh, huh, yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, good luck and thanks for coming in. Thank you. Appreciate it very much. And uh, good luck next year. All right. Thank you. Thank you. So the next individual uh, we have here is, uh, our, this must be a, a Miss Mailing. Yes. W give us your name. Uh, Cassidy Mailing. So uh, how old are you, Cass? Eleven. Eleven? Man, that was a hard question, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't remember. <laughs> so uh, what club are you in? Bear Creek Guys and Gals. Uh, what projects do you take? I have welding dogs and goats. Welding. So uh, that's interesting. <coughs> For an 11-year-old, who helped you out with that project? My dad. That's right. Is he a pretty good welder? Yeah. Is he a better teacher? Yeah. Okay, good. So uh, let's talk about welding. What did you do? I made um, a plant trellis. Okay. Uh, consisting of what material? What type of metal? Do you use rod, flat metal, or...? Tube. Tube? And it held a uh, flower pot? It's like five feet tall, maybe. Oh, okay. So how's your welds look? Good, I guess. Did you, <laughs> <laughs> did you use an electric welder, or did you use uh, gas and, or an acetylene? Uh, I used a MIG. Oh, MIG welder. Oh, a little fancier than us old farmers. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Uh, so you don't know how you did on that project yet? No. Okay, you're going to find out just like this young lady is probably about 3 o'clock. Yep. All right, good. Also, you showed go uh, dogs this morning, right? Yeah. How'd you do? I got second place in my dog's height. That's good. Well, um, what breed is your dog? Australian Shepherd. Good. Um, so the, you did dog agility. Yep. Uh, tell us about that. What you do? Um, what do they make you do, I should say? There's a bunch of jumps. There's like an A-frame where they walk up a ramp and then walk back down. Uh, a dog walk is, it's kind of like a ramp, but they walk up, walk straight, and then walk back down. Uh, there's a tunnel that they go through. She did did okay on the tunnel? Yeah. Good. So how'd you train her? You had all these these things at home, or do you come in as a club and practice? I have a few things at home, but we also do, like, practices um, at um, somebody's house. That's good. Uh, so goats, are you ready to show goats? <laughs> <laughs> do you have, uh, I assume you have market goats. Yeah. And you weigh them. What do they weigh? Um, hey. Mine weighs 58. Okay. So that's a boar goat. Yeah. So you only have one? Yeah. Okay. Um, so are you going to be in showmanship? Yep. So does your goat cooperate? Kind of. <laughs> so uh, tell us a little bit about showmanship. Um, what do you have to do? You have to, the judge, um, judges you instead of your goat and how you show your goat so it's you have to do your best to show your goat off and you're right they don't judge you they judge the goat and how you handle the goat is is that correct they judge you yeah instead of the goat yeah so it doesn't matter what kind how your goat looks but you have to look pretty good, don't you? Yeah. Okay. So, well, thanks for coming in. We appreciate you visiting with mm -hmm. us. You can just pass that mic on down. So I think we have another mailing here, right? Yep. What's your name? Rory. Lori? Rory. Rory. Okay. 
Uh, how old are you? Eleven. And are you Bear Creek? Yes. Okay. So what do you show? Um, I show goats. So how, how many? Just one. Just one. A boar goat? Yes. Uh, how, how much did it weigh? 75 pounds. So tell us about showing it when you're ready to show it for the market class. Um, That's a pretty good size goat. Can you handle it? You're little. <laughs> you're pretty small. <laughs> it's hard, but I've, I'm learning. Um, so you have to walk them around and brace them. Good eye contact is always key. Um, that's pretty much it. Okay. Sounds like she knows what she's doing. So that's, yeah, that's a large goat. Is this your first year in goats? Yes. Okay. So how do you like it? It's okay. Okay. Where'd you get your goat? My aunt. Okay. That's good. So any other projects? You just took goats? Um, I did woodworking also. How'd you do there? Um, I made a basket, a trash can basketball backboard. Oh, interesting. Tell the audience what that looks like. Um, it's Can you describe like it? A, there's a board on the bottom that your trash can sits on, and then there's a two by four holding another piece of wood that's the backboard part of it, I guess. How long did it take you to make it? Um, about four or five days. Good. So I hope you place, and if you... And if you guys get blue states, you get to go to state, right, on those static exhibits? Yep. Good. Well, congratulations, and thanks for coming in, young lady. Yep. And good luck with that big goat. Thank you. That's a pretty good-sized goat. Okay, next we have another. I talked to this young lady this morning, talked to her, convinced her to come in and talk with us, Ryan. And your name? Bailey Mailing. Bailey, how old are you? Thirteen. And Bear Creek guys? Yep. Good. So tell us, you have goats and what else? Um, I have one goat named Bolt. Um, I have cake decorating, visual arts, and fabric and fashion. Fabric and fashion. Let's talk about that. Um, how'd you do? Did you model? Yes, I did. So for modeling, I won champion construction intermediate. So I made um, my clothes and then I modeled them and I won my division and then I also won grand champion intermediate model so I won over all the intermediates that were modeling and then for my actual pants that I had I got a blue state fair um, yeah that's good um, so did you model those pants yep okay uh, and any accessories with it or just um, I had a white shirt with it, and then I had my cow jewelry. Okay. I hope your pants didn't have holes in them, did they? No. Okay. I, I see a lot of those. We would be ashamed at my age to wear those kind of pants now that the young <laughs> people wear. And cake decorating. Yep. How'd you do? You don't know yet. I don't know yet. So what, uh, what'd you do in cake decorating? Um, I made a volcano fondant cake. So that doesn't mean much to me, but what is it? <laughs> so you, when you do cake decorating, you have to cover foam instead of an actual cake. Oh, okay. And so I had to cover my foam base in fondant, and then I made a cone piece of fondant or a cone base and put fondant over it and made that the volcano. And then I made vines and flowers going up it with some caramelized sugar on top as lava. Sounds good. I don't think I'd want to eat it, but it sounds good, doesn't it, Ryan? <laughs> you made actual cake, it'd be a good dessert. <laughs> yeah, we might have to talk her into making this one. So uh, if you go to State Fair with that, what's the rules or the procedure? Do you take the same one or do you do something? Um, it kind of depends. Last year I took the same one because it was still all intact, but if something's broken or if it's falling apart, you should probably make a new one. Yeah. And you have a week in between county fair and state, so you might have to make a, make a mm -hmm. new one if the frosting dries. Yep. Okay. Goats, you're ready? You had just one goat? Yeah. And what did you say its name was? Bolt. Okay. Um, what did it weigh? It weighed 65. Oh, so your sister might beat you, huh? <laughs> that big goat, I think, is impressive with 75 pounds. Uh, are you ready to do that show? Yep. How do you prep to show? 
Um, you need to walk your goat and make sure that they know how to walk with you and that they will walk respectfully and not pull. Um, and then you also need to practice bracing them so you know how to show off their muscle. Okay, very good. Do you wash them or anything before the show? Yes, um, we washed them yesterday actually, and we use whitening shampoo so they're not their knees aren't yellow since they've been down all the time. That's a good idea. Okay, so you dress them up, make them look pretty. Yep. Uh, you had one other project and I missed it. You, I have you down as goats, cake, and uh, visual arts. Visual arts. What'd you do in visuals? Um, I used two projects that I had made during art in school. I have a tractor, pencil drawing, and an abstract painting. What's your abstract? That's just different colors? It's um, five different shades of purple, and it's got white lines in between. Sounds good. So do you know how you did on that? That's static too, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so you'll find that out this afternoon also. Yep. Well, girls, thank you all for coming in. We appreciate it, and, and good luck in those, the GOAT show and uh, all the other projects you do. It's been a pleasure talking to you. Thank you. Thank you. you. Thanks. Good luck. So we'll have, uh, let's have four more up here if we can get them, Ryan. It sounds like these ki kids are pretty busy, I think. So we have three young ladies here, and oh, we do have a male here. We finally have a boy here. If I don't care who grabs the mics, whoever wants to grab a mic, grab one more here. So we'll start on the right here. Uh, your name? Uh, I'm Cody Anderson. Cody. Uh, what club? Uh, Bent Barrels and Crooked Arrows. Oh, so you went to state also. <laughs> yeah. So what you sh what you do? Did you shoot or did you do the bow? Um, I did archery, so the bow, and then twenty two rifle, twenty two pistol, and then air pistol. You sound like you're busy. <laughs> yeah. So did you hit the target? Um, yeah. Did you hit bullseye? Uh, a couple times. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, how'd you do in in archery? So archery, I got eighth. Um, on blue face and on animal, or no animals, I got sixth. And then pistol and rifle, I I don't remember those ones. <laughs> That's good. So, you again, it takes a lot of practice and a lot of work. And uh, as a team, how did uh, Goshen County do? Uh, I think we did pretty, like, good all around together. Like, wasn't too bad. I didn't go to the award ceremony because I had to turn right back around and go somewhere else. But, um but when we got back and kind of heard what everybody did, it wasn't too bad and seems to do well. Good. And you ha you do you just did dogs this morning? Yeah, and then I had horses um, okay. yesterday as well. Let's talk, a, talk about your horses. Uh, what pro or what events were you in? Um, pretty much everything with horses. So um, I did. I had three horses at fair this year. I had a yearling and then two geldings. Um, my filly did pretty well. She got second overall quarter horse, so reserve grand champion, which was pretty well. I was shocked about yeah. that one. And then um, my buckskin and my dappled gray, I got third in showmanship with the dapple, and then I got reserve grand champion with the buckskin and FFA showmanship. And then um, I'll go to state with – the buckskin for um, FFA showmanship, and then um, for reigning as well. Okay, so you're in reigning and uh, in FFA. Mm -hmm. Are you uh, in Torrington chapter? Uh, Southeast FFA. Southeast FFA, okay. Uh, so tell us a little bit about reigning. What, do you have a pattern, or what is, what's available there? Um, it was kind of like my first time ever doing riding on, like, any horse. I just kind of, like, jumped on him and did it because I was signed up for it, so why not? And I had pretty much already done everything else with both of them, so I just decided to do riding with him. And then it's something that, like, the my horse knows extremely well because my sister did it on him multiple okay. times. But, like, it's just kind of, like, um it's a lot like to the pattern it's a lot so uh the pattern this year you had to do like a little circle and then a big circle and do three circles on each side and then spin four and then same thing on the other side and spin four and then you had to go and do rollbacks and stuff like that so, so there's a lot to it did you have to change leads um yeah so you'd go into your right lead or 
your left lead first, and then you'd go into your right lead as you went to the other. Explain direction. to the audience what that is. Um, so when you you pick up a lead, it's like kind of like your horse is just like it's smooth to go that re- direction. Is like kind of what it's feeling like, and then when they change lead, you kind of feel them like pop over, but it's like smooth and stuff like that. Like it's just comfortable for you to ride in that. Yeah, that's very important too, isn't it? <laughs> very much so. So did you do any equitation? Uh, yeah, so I did Western equitation. I did Western riding. Um, pretty much just everything. <laughs> I don't think there was anything that I didn't. Tell us a little bit about equitation. Um, so equitation is kind of like the slowest, kind of like smoothest, um, just well-behaved, like how your horse acts in the ring. So like oh, high-headed and stuff like that, like kind of running faster. They don't t- tend to look at that. It's like kind of they carry their head nice and low, um, just a very smooth, slow, like lope when you're loping or when they're jogging, just slow and very like calm is kind of what they look for in Western equitation. And there's just how you ride in general, like just in sync and like just look nice and stuff like that in your saddle. Look, it's kind of like a pleasant ride, huh? Yeah, pretty much. Just like a relaxing, pleasant ride. Yeah. Now, um, so you're going to do reigning in FFA. What else? Are you going to do anything else? Uh, that's FFA, at state? showmanship, and then I'll do a halter class with um, my yearling. Okay. Let's talk about dogs. You did dog agility. Um. Yeah, I had two dogs in dog agility. Um. So... I had my first dog, which is an Aussie in level three, and I got reserve grand champion overall with him. And then my other dog, I did level two. It was the first time I've ever um, been off leash with him, and I hadn't really practiced too much with them. So that was a bit rough, but the other one did well. That's good. So you enjoy that. Yeah. Are you going state it? With the dogs? Um, I'm not sure yet because uh, with state, the horse show and the dog show kind of clash with each oh, other, so that's a little difficult About the there. same time. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, good luck, and thanks for coming in. Thank you. Appreciate it. We'll go on to the next young lady. I assume you're in 4-H. Yes, I and am. And your name? Gracie Case. Gracie. Uh, got to get this down. What club are you in? I'm in Bear Creek Guys and Gals. All right. What do you show? I show, so I have two pigs, two steers, um, a chicken, and then I do woodworking and baking. Man, you're busy, yes. aren't you? Uh, let's go with, uh, I'm interested in this poultry thing because uh, I noticed it's a little different this year. Yes. Quite a bit different, and can you, you tell us why? So there is a disease, a bird disease, which keep, kept us from showing um, personal at the fairgrounds this year and because we didn't want any of the birds to die. So we had to do it virtually, for showmanship at least. So the judge was on Zoom, and the shower was on Zoom, and we would just do it on Zoom. How'd you do in showmanship? I got grand champion. Hmm. That is pretty good if you did it virtual. Yes. So tell us how you set up for that. How'd you, uh, So. Uh, with Zoom, how'd you do that? So for Zoom, we did it in my mom's driveway, but we set up this table and we had a kennel and then like there would be a cage at the fairgrounds and then we cleaned her up just like any other show and then we got the iPad and we did it on Zoom. We had the cage because the judge always looks out of how you would take the bird out of the cage. So Sure, good. So what else do you do in uh, showmanship? Do you have so to show the judge anything else? So for showmanship, the judge is not looking at the bird like market would. It would look look at how the bird and you cooperate so if your bird is trying to run away all the time that wouldn't be the best thing (laughs) but if you and your bird are moving together then that's pretty good that's good huh let's talk about your other projects um you have two steers two steers yes are they market they're market steers and what breed they are an angus Angus breed. So what do they weigh? 
So my biggest one is 1426, I think. And then my smaller one is 1252, I'm pretty sure. So you will be in different classes. Yes. So that's good because mm -hmm. you can show them both. If, you, if you're in the same class, you have yes. to recruit somebody, huh? Yes. So they pretty well behaved? Um, so I guess, I mean, they can get a little rowdy sometimes. Sometimes they're buttheads, but <laughs> they're good steers. She's pretty frank. <laughs> yep, that's good. And uh, what what you do in woods? So in woods, I made this hanging flower pot with wooden flowers inside of it. So you'll see how you did this afternoon. And yes. Okay. Well, good luck and thanks for coming in and talking oh. to us. It's been a pleasure talking to you. I didn't ask, are you a junior or? A junior, yes. Junior, okay. Thank you. You're so now the next young lady, I assume you were in poultry to this mm -hmm. today. Uh, your name? Julia Frohr. Julia. Uh, what, el what other, are you a junior? I'm an intermediate. Intermediate. Mm -hmm. uh, so how old are you? 12. 12. Uh, what else? You showed poultry. I made a quilt this year. Quilt? Mm-hmm. So you don't know how you did on that quilt? No. Nope. So what's a quilt look like? Can you describe it for us? It's called a quilt quilt. Celtic twist. It's about, I think it's like 14 by 14. It's a square. And um, it kind of has two different colors. And they're like, it makes it look like they're twisted around each other. Like oh. there's ropes twisting okay. around each other. Yeah. So um, can you tell us what the judge looks for in those? I have no idea. You have this no is idea. only my second year. So. Okay, okay, that's good. So let's talk about your poultry project. Um, was that fun? It was okay. Okay. <laughs> so tell, uh, did you show virtually? Yeah. How'd it go? I got <laughs> reserve champion. Oh, so you did okay. Yeah. So I guess it was okay, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. That's good. Um, Tell us a little bit about the contest. Uh, did you have a written contest? Um, well, first we did a Kahoot on a What computer. is a Kahoot? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's a sort of test you take on the computer where you race each other to oh. click the answer. And okay. Yeah, we did that. And How'd you do on that? Um, I got second to last place <laughs> <laughs> out of seven. Well, you can just tell everybody you got second. I wouldn't tell them it was last, <laughs> just second to the last. Just don't tell them that. Yeah. So did you enjoy it? It's a little yeah. harder this year, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not as much fun. We, we usually don't do this. We usually just show. Yeah. So yeah. I assume, I, I noticed you had four birds out there, uh, meat birds uh, that oh, had been... Yeah. So mm -hmm. what'd you do with those meat birds? Um, we had a paper and we graded each one. Like um, we would take one of them, we would grade how much, we had A, B, C, and no grade. Mm -hmm. Oh. And Did so we would grade it by how how much meat was missing or how much meat it had it or, had or flaw in it or something. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Uh, so how'd you do on that? Did you win I did anything? Okay. Did you, did you win anything? Um, I got reserve champion on that. Well. Wait, no, no, I got third place. <laughs> okay. Yeah. That's fine. That's okay. good. So that's really good, and it's kind of hard. Mm -hmm. So uh, good luck, and I hope your quilt did well. Thanks. And I'm going to have to see that twisted quilt. <laughs> uh, let, so we'll pass it on to this young man. And I know he knows a lot, I would bet. Your name? I'm Jacob. And you're a senior, I assume? Yes. Uh, and you're in? Horseshoe Acre? Acres, yeah. Horseshoe Acres. So uh, what projects do you take? Um, so I partook in the poultry project. I did fashion and fabric and food nutrition this year, so I 
took it back quite a few projects compared to normal because I usually do about 10. Yeah. So how you do it? Oh, you don't know how you did in foods. Um, they actually told me how I did after that. Oh, you, you guys, did you hear that? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know overall. Oh, But okay. I just know I got a purple ribbon for both of my um, projects in that. That's good. So um, since you're older, <clears throat> you're going to tell us about the whole poultry program this year. Because of the bird flu, you did a lot of things different. So kind of go over the contest and how it all went. So we took a very different approach compared to normal. So we did the virtual showmanship that the girls touched up on. And so um, basically everyone just got on the Zoom with the judge and Megan. And we were all told to basically set up a table with a kennel and wear nicer clothes, obviously, like you would with the normal showmanship. And we, yeah, we're basically out in our driveway, too, on our farm. And had the iPad, had my sisters and I all had our birds set up and ready to go. And then one by one we went, um, did our showmanship, and then today we had the avian bull is what we called it. And so it's kind of like a mix of a poultry judging contest, which you can do an FFA, which includes the carcass judging contest, um, interior egg grading, judging poultry products that have already been made, such as like chicken nuggets or something. And then we did the Kahoot to test like overall knowledge on chicken things. Mm -hmm. Very good. How'd you do? Um, I got grand champion in showmanship and the bowl. So he did very well. He's fine. Yeah. He's, what he's telling us, he so did an excellent job. I want to rewind it a bit with your with those Zoom showmanship. Do you have to like? I would assume that recording that is a no no. It's all live. It does. It have yeah, to be it was live? live. All of that was live. Yeah, it was live, and it was a little difficult because it was super windy that day, <laughs> and so trying to hear everything coming out of the iPad was a little difficult. <laughs> yeah, yeah, sounds interesting. So you want to tell us anything else? And so, also for my poultry project, we had the chick quest this year, like normal. Um, oh. So, yeah, we still went to, I think it was like eight classrooms or eight, or eight to ten, okay. something along yeah. those lines. I don't remember, honestly. That was a hot second ago now. And so we still brought in the eggs, and they got to hatch the chicks. And, um, yeah, I had to bring those home for biosecurity. Like, they didn't go anywhere else, really. Um but the kids still got to do that and have fun and learn more about agriculture. Yeah. And also this year, um, there's going to be a few kids still selling meat birds. Thank you. But it's going to be very different because we can't bring them in. Oh, yeah. So we're, each kid doing it is going to have a little booth set up on Saturday? On Saturday. On Saturday during the livestock auction. But it's going to be a silent auction style thing oh. for the birds. That's and good. it's still going to be in the frontier shelter. That's good. So you basically you're going to finish up with the sale of your birds. Mm -hmm. That's good. Yep. That's good. Because, sorry, it's Megan. So because the avian influenza is more of a respiratory illness and it doesn't affect the meat quality, meat quality. Um, everyone involved felt that it was safest just to leave those birds at home so that they can go straight to processing once you bid on them finally and get to have them so they'll be very very safe to eat and consume um, and it was important to everybody that we provided that opportunity for the kids and the buyers too because those are some good looking meat birds that we've been growing this year so good that sounds excellent so mm -hmm. as a, as any uh program uh the ffa kids and 4-h kids <laughs> have to follow uh, mm -hmm. state regs and federal regs so we appreciate that and i'd like to thank everybody for coming in so uh That'll kind of do it for today, I think. I think so. Anything else, Megan? News on the fairgrounds? No? I've been here forever. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, no, we'll have to, uh, we'll definitely remind our buyers that show up on Saturday to watch for that, for the chickens and everything. That'll be something different this year. And, yeah, no, we encourage everyone to come on out to the fair this week. Um, do you want to take a look at some youth events going on the rest of today and tomorrow? Yeah, and also our, uh, we'll have to... Uh, thank our sponsors for uh, this program. I enjoy it, and uh, we have some very educated kids uh, in 4-H and FFA. It's good for them all. 
So I'd just like to mention a little bit about tomorrow. Uh, well, in fact, we have today at 6, we have the GOAT Costume and Agility Contest. Um, and then at 7 p.m., we have the 4-H and FFA Team Sort in the Pavilion. And I'd also like to mention Wednesday. Uh, it's going to be a busy day with the sheep uh, show and the first and second year lamb and the uh, county bred and fed lamb show and also the rabbit show. Uh, so that's that's a lot to do in the, the market goat show and showmanship. That'll be later on on Wednesday too. So there are, there's a lot of activities on on Wednesday and of course Thursday is parade day and we'll just have one program I believe Ryan and I don't know what time we'll do that but it'll be tomorrow so keep listening if you if you can't go to the parade and affair so yeah another quick reminder too on some events tomorrow the lamb barbecue and Platte Valley Bank ice cream social at 5 30 at the sheep barn area also a Goshen County sheep lead contest in the show ring at six and the little bits and spurs dog races at six o'clock you can enter at the grass show ring here at the fairgrounds as my grandpa mentioned, I'd like to thank the sponsors that make these broadcasts possible. In part, they're sponsored by Brown Company, Eastern Wyoming College, Goshen Vet Clinic, Mike Rafferty, State Farm Insurance Agent, Torrington Office Supply, Torrington Livestock, and Torrington Beverage. We thank those sponsors that make these interviews with our local 4-H and FFA youth possible, and I think that should do it for us. For Ron Kaufman, I'm Ryan Kaith. We'll send it back to the studios with Chris Jenkins at KERM.